Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys, we're going to dive down into the charts for Cardano. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing inside this data and why I think there might be a bullish break in the near future. As we get into this video, if you do find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and you are going to be kept up to date with all the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you have haven't yet joined us in discord links in the description down below go check it out completely free a fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 including cardano ada with its own specific channel right let's um jump on down into into the desktop and take a look at what's going on here with cardano and the movements of price action on the charts okay guys this is just a good starting position uh, to kind of just review where we are right now, uh, obviously this is the hourly chart and it just kind of shows us um, these really small movements and this very impulsive move to the downside. And again, we can acknowledge that this is looking like five waves um, and we actually have an extension on this from our lower range. And I'm not going to focus on this too much today because I really want to talk about the kind of bigger picture. But here you can see that we uh, we pretty much went down to a 2.6 for an AK. So a good extension level there on that fifth wave low. Um, now. One of the things that I really do want to focus on is the bigger trend overall, right? Because we've been in a corrective state for a little while, and it's important that we acknowledge what this actually means on a bigger scale, right? And why I think we're, we're on the cusp of big change for Cardano, not just from a fundamental perspective, but also from a technical analysis perspective as well. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump up into our daily chart. This really shows us, um, you know, what's going on with this uh, this scale, right? Because I'm gonna just shoot this down a little bit lower so we can actually see, you know, the progress that Cardano has made so far. Um, you know, despite this being controversial and, and lots of, uh, you know, different opinions on whether Cardano is a good project or a shit project. Um, ultimately, you know, we have to acknowledge that it's outperformed many other um, you know, projects in this space, right? We've seen 17,500% or 17,350% um, from this low point of March 2020, right? Now, obviously, even I didn't buy it that low. Um, I think I got in somewhere in 2020, uh, might have been somewhere around here. I noticed it around this pullback. I was looking for a point to kind of dollar cost average in. Um, so yeah, it's about that uh yeah about there seven to eight cents something in that right um so obviously i think i've enjoyed a really good run to the upside and i haven't sold any i've just held on to it because i don't think this is over just yet in fact i think there is a bigger swings still to occur now obviously we can compare the how the performance of cardano has been against the performance of other assets right and obviously we have ethereum running up at about five thousand percent we have bitcoin at around uh that sixteen hundred percent and um you know ultimately cardano has outperformed those assets right and amongst others as well I and mean, it has performed incredibly well but obviously we've had this corrective state for a little bit of time um, and what i mean by that is actually this started back in may of 2021 and this pullback that we have seen was uh, very corrective it was lots of overlapping and this actual move here seemed to be more of a uh, a triangular wedge which actually you know we have plotted that out as an a through e um, in terms of an Elliott wave triangle and then we had that boost to the upside now i've actually marked this up as a wave b um, because we didn't reach the minimum threshold um of a 1.618 for a fifth wave we haven't got there yet right therefore all of this here um is actually looking like a correction of a fourth wave rather than being um, you know, corrective or a trend to the downside. What we actually have is a very much a, a corrective state, right? So we have um, an A wave coming down low, okay? That's been effectively this area here of the bottom of our triangle. We then exploded out of our triangle. We set a new all-time high, and this is actually a B wave high. And this B wave is higher than our origin of uh, the third wave high, okay? So um, this actually then tells us that we should be expecting to go down lower than the originating A wave itself, right? Um, and the reasoning for this is this is called an expanding flat correction, okay? And um, this is happening because of a couple of things. One, we didn't actually reach the minimum threshold of what a fifth wave would need to be in order to be classified as a fifth wave. And we have a very clear impulsive move to the upside um, over the entirety of you know, 2020 into 2021. 
Um, so we know that there's a minimum threshold for a fifth wave, and that has to be a 1.618 move, and this wasn't to it. So therefore, you know, we're in a corrective state, and we have to look for, you know, additional patterns. Now, we were analyzing this quite a bit until we kind of realized that, yeah, there's a lot of overlap here. There's not a definitive trend being set, but instead we have a severe correction being led in. And uh, we actually have on this way down here, um, again, more overlap, but this overlap actually being a double um, correction move. So you think of it like an ABC with an ABC, but in, in terms of Elliott wave, you would probably look at this more like an ABC um, and then that C wave being extended down with um, you know, a WXY, for example. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. We've actually gone down low enough um, to be considered, uh, you know, this actual, this low C wave to actually be considered in and complete. And therefore, when we actually take into consideration this low point of our fourth wave completion coming in down here, it's possible we come down a little bit lower. I'm not overly too concerned with that. Um, and I'll go through why that will be in a moment. Um, so for the most part, if this is our fourth wave low, although I do anticipate maybe a little bit lower, um, and this being 81.5 cent, then actually that would put our 1.6 uh, or 1.618 minimum threshold for the fifth wave at $4.99. Okay, so we're already talking about moving up quite significantly. Now, if we take the current position and we move that up to where we are, it's still only, well, four and a half X. It's not even you know, a, a 10x project at this point. Obviously, those gains have really been in. So we are talking the last little uh, kind of um, move to the upside, still pretty significant gains to be made. Um, and that's the minimum level. We could, of course, talk about maybe moving up uh, a little bit higher. The um, 2.618 is indicating th uh, $15.30. Okay, so a significant move from our current position, if we were to get an overextended fifth wave like this, um, you would be talking about, you know, 16 X's at that point. Okay, so, you know, I think that $5 is a little bit on the low threshold. I think $15 is is pretty nice, but I think it's uh, probably not going to happen unless something, um, I mean, it's very possible, I'd be fair to it. We'd have to see more data to really be you know, confident on it. Um, somewhere between these two would lie pretty decently, you know, uh, uh, maybe a $10 range. It's right up there. It's looking pretty good. Um, so overall, we actually have a pretty decent correction coming in here. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, there's no guarantee that this is exactly what's going on, right? There's no guarantee that this is an expanding flat correction. Yes, there's a lot of overlap and you can kind of understand the wave counts, etc. Um, but there's no guarantee of it. We've got a lot of uncertainty, right? Um, so we like to back this up with additional um, indicators in the space, right? So we want to not just look at what is going on with Elliott wave and the counts of the waves, etc. We want to also rely on a few additional things. So obviously we have the Fibonacci retracement tools, um, and these are great indicators of, uh, of what we're looking for, right? So um, as we kind of analyze these movements down here, we, we should obviously be very aware um, of what this is looking like and whether or not this actually leads us into any further downside. So the first thing I want to do is acknowledge that, yes, there's still potential downside here. I'm not saying that the C wave, uh, this larger C wave is actually in just yet, um, because you know, we can acknowledge that this could potentially come down a little bit lower towards 71 cent. And again, that's still very valid for our C wave. Um, it could actually go down quite significantly and still be a very valid count. Um, so we want to just acknowledge that there is that possibility. However, um, that's just based on this if that's just based on this being an ABC correction, which I don't think it actually is. Although we do have a lot of overlap here, okay? Um, so again, we should be very mindful over these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you why I think this is a potentially a good area for reversal. And that actually comes in on a lower time frame, um, And then I'm gonna get into those additional indicators, right? Because we can't just rely on wave counting. Um, so here we obviously have uh, a few good kind of moves on this hourly chart and it's very impulsive in its nature here on the hourly chart right and again a lot of this stuff is is driven from uh, what's been going on most recently now here we have a fourth wave correction with the fifth wave coming right down into a 2.618 extension and again you know i think that's a pretty good reversal point that's also where we started to see a good push back to the upside recently okay now this could be in itself you know a whole set of five waves and therefore you know we haven't actually seen the bottom of this we might come down a little bit lower and if that is the case then you know we look for you know confirmation between these levels and uh, what is the most probable so if we are thinking that this here is uh, you know, a wave one, two, um, you know, three, four, and then the fifth wave would be about 76 cent, right? So that's a very a real possibility, right? Um, so I'll just mark that up as a, a potential zone. The other thing that I think is uh, really important to kind of acknowledge is also 
um, some of these other movements and to say whether or not they have reached their, their threshold, right? Um, so if we actually pull this up, we can see that this actually has gone past its 1.618 as well. So again, we know that that's pretty uh, impulsive in its nature. And for the most part, we are looking pretty good. Now, obviously on here, we also have um, an interesting zone. So as we kind of move up through the different time frames, we can also acknowledge where things have currently gone down to. This case here is a 1.382. So every single one of these is resonating incredibly well with the Fibonacci retracement level. Okay, so we obviously have some kind of clarity going on here across these different waves that help us understand, you know, where our uh, reversal points are. Right now, we are looking for a little bit lower, but um, you know, it's not terribly too much further, um, and we are pretty much where we need to be. So a little bit more accumulation potentially here on the horizon. Now, the other thing I want to kind of highlight to you guys and why I think we are looking um, for a quite a significant break to the upside is that we actually have the stochastic RSI indicated here, right? So I'm going to just bring this up on the chart in a slightly bigger way. Um, so here we have the hourly stochastic RSI, right? And this is indicating that we need to come down right we're overbought and we need to come down to the oversold area then in order for that to happen we need to lose value in um, you know, ADA now that might mean that we drop down to you know around that 76 cent area complete the wave counts right that's really what that is possible here when we jump up into our four hourly we have a mid-range point so again we could pull this down this isn't going to support a huge drop it's going to support a medium drop um, so kind of going to get us into that kind of range um, of 76 cent, maybe a little bit lower um, as indicated with our C wave on the larger time frame. Now the A hourly is actually all the way down here. So again, this kind of correction would allow this to come right back down and down into the oversold area. And again, this isn't an uncommon practice. We move up, we come back down right back into this oversold area before we actually get a really big run to the upside. Okay, so this isn't anything unusual, but it gets really interesting when we jump up into the real uh, higher time frames. We already have a really heavily oversold daily stochastic RSI. And so this is going to be supporting a big move to the upside across a daily time frame. And um, so again, this isn't micro movements. This isn't what's going to happen in 24 hours. This is kind of what's going to happen over the course of a month. OK, um, and this is going to be quite a significant push upwards. This means effectively that we're seeing uh, seem to be coming towards an end of a correction. And as we come up into the weekly time frame, you get a very similar scenario, guys. We're right down here in an oversold area. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay. Um, I'm going to bring this down. Sorry, I say overlay it, but I'm going to bring up this stochastic RSI and I'm going to minim uh, reduce the size down of our weekly chart here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight to you what happens when we are in the oversold area um, as we uh, find ourselves on this stochastic RSI. I'm going to mark up all of these oversold areas and I'm going to show you what happens after we have reached this oversold area um, in a really big way. OK. Now, there's an exception of it right here, but this was basically the uh, the pandemic really kicking in. So we didn't actually move the price up too much um, from this low point. So again, the low point is around here. We moved up a little bit before crashing down. OK, so what do we have? Well, we have these oversold stochastic RSI positioning, and then we have an immediate surge to the upside afterwards, right? So right now, Cardano is right down here. Cardano is not the only asset that's down here on this weekly time frame. You also have things like Bitcoin, pretty much most altcoins really at this point, um, after this correction, are all the way down here, right? So they're supporting a huge move to the upside. OK, so we can see over the time period here, um, you know, pretty much from August uh, 2018 uh, in that bear market scenario, we got to a point where December 2018 was incredibly low and we started to go in back into a bit of a bull market. The pandemic was a bit of a, a blip on the radar and then we started to really kick off again. And um, so what we have basically is in this uh, fourth wave correction, a stochastic RSI that's going to be supporting a huge move to the upside. OK, so obviously, you know, we couple this technical information from the stochastic RSI with our wave counts and we actually get a pretty accurate picture as to what is the most probable outcome. And that is that there is going to be a surge to the upside coming. We've had a pretty decent correction. And again, we can throw in here uh, the percentage value lost, uh, which comes in at about 74 percent. And by all stretches of the imagination, you would want to class that as a bear market situation. You know, it's dropped down a huge amount, but this is where the value is added, right? Um, and once we drop down these significant values, this is where you start to see the real value 
um, being added to your portfolio when you decide to buy these dips. Um, and you can see here that 92% was what happened from the previous bull run or from the, the I guess the launch of data here on uh, Binance for Cardano and um, through to the bear market lows. Um, you could potentially argue that actually we pulled this all the way down here to 95% loss, right? Um, so be running a significant portion that we are right now about 75% or yeah, 73%. Um, we are, you know, right in that kind of cusp of looking at you know a lot of value being dropped and decreasing quite massively the bonus here guys is that everything is actually looking ready for a bounce to the upside whether that is a bounce or whether that is a huge surge as i think it is um, in terms of getting that fifth wave in and um, obviously once we have that fifth wave that's where we do see this 95 percent value lost and um, cardano might be a little bit of an exception to that rule but for the most part, that's kind of what I'm looking at here for Cardano. Um, so, you know, we can jump up into that monthly view as well. We can also see that the stochastic RSI on our monthly view is also heavily oversold. And we haven't been this oversold since the, uh, well, October, um, yeah, October, August, October, September, October um, 2019, right? So we are looking pretty significant now. And on this, um, you know, we monthly kind of time frame, you can see this is a small blip on the radar um, for what is actually going on here with Cardano. So um, lots of noise on our smaller time frame. Hard to, uh, you know, refute that. Um, but when we actually zoom out, the situation is not as dire as we may be led to believe. In fact, I think actually um, Cardano is going to be doing incredibly well a lot sooner than people might think. Um, so guys, I'm going to leave the video there. Hopefully you have found this video useful and informative. If you have hit the like button, I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then do go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you are going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.